Oh, hey, neighbors. Welcome to the shed shop. Why am I on the floor, neighbors? Well, it's raining outside, and I got this mini tiller for neighbor Nathan uh, that we have to do a diagnostics on. And uh, it's too tall to put up on the workbench unless I only lay it sideways. And so I'm going to sit down here on the floor with you guys, and we're going to see what the hell's wrong with this tiller. Uh, thank you, uh, Greasy Shop Rag, for your comments about the 017. You gave me a lot to think about, neighbor. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I am always willing um, to take advice because I was never taught by anybody how to do that shit. And some of the shit I was taught by other people was wrong. Like, uh, I never understood the concept of grease, literal grease, on chainsaw bearings. Um, it never made sense to me because I'm like, wait a minute. The two-stroke oil and, and gas is going to get to that grease continuously. And the gas in that mixture is going to gradually break down and burn the grease. And um, I, I, I think even though I have a couple of service manuals, old service manuals from the 80s that say exactly that. Hot temp lithium grease on the bearings. Uh, I prefer to use oil. Uh, I am researching uh, good... Um, high speed bearing oils they make special oils uh, that are specific to that application and so I've been looking into that um, but I was thinking with this tiller and uh, chainsaws the differences and when I work on blowers and everything on a chainsaw it's so easy to just pull the muffler and see your piston on some of these blowers backpack blowers handheld blowers tillers things like that uh, four mixes. Uh, it's not so easy. And I have a camera. I have an endoscope. Uh, where the hell is it? <laughs> uh, my camera's in here somewhere, neighbors. I have that endoscope, but it only hooks up to my laptop. It's supposed to be able to hook up to the phone, but I can't get the software to work. Uh, but either way, uh, as I think about this tiller, I'm thinking and looking at it, and I'm thinking, is there an easy way to quickly get to the piston? Because I don't have history on this. Uh, uh, piece of equipment and the neighbor that owns it is unable to answer the phone right now um so that being said there was one other thing i wanted to bring up neighbors and i can't think about it i gotta pause you damn it well hell neighbors i cannot remember uh, i'm very tired i have been wrestling this one right here uh that was another thing you know everybody says set your carb screws to one and a quarter um i really have a hard time pulling cord and so when i go to restart a stall saw after uh certain work's been done like a carb rebuild or a full rebuild or something and uh i have reset them screws to one and a quarter that that on many saws is so rich that the saw will never even start it just immediately floods uh and then on other saws i've had it on like echoes and various things um uh that one and a quarter isn't enough they need to come out further uh, especially on like weed eaters and stuff if you're working on something like that it is a, a good general rule to start at one and a quarter turns and go in or out from there but a lot of times that has destroyed my shoulder because I'm listening to everybody else. Like I know on the 028s, I know better more often than not when I have an 028 with a wall barrel, not the Tillotson carb, with a wall barrel carburetor, uh, one and a quarter is always too much. My chip always floods. And so I usually go like three quarter on my low and a max of one on my high. And that usually works as a good starting point for me on that one. One and a quarter on both. I have, I have video of me nightmare wrestling an 028 um where i had the carb screws out at like one and a quarter turn strong almost one and a half probably and i had never reset them and i couldn't get that saw to go at all um and i didn't even think because i'm thinking well one and a quarter should work um but it doesn't always and so with his right now it's like i can't figure out i can't even get it started long enough to adjust anything at all just to get me a good starting point i have tried various spots but again that's a big heavy saw and pulling that cord each time you make a tiny adjustment to see what the saw is doing and the carburetor is doing uh is is not so easy for the chainsaw redeemer uh, i have been, been been bitten by a sweat beat i think is what people call them i don't know what they are uh, yes it has bitten me um and that being said i'm tired from that so i forgot what the hell i was going to say but um we're going to turn you right down to the floor bench which is sometimes my life while we wait for a new building and decide if i'm gonna have the new building come because i'm hurting i don't know if i can keep doing this 
And if I can't get smart enough to find those sweet spots and remember them on particular carburetors, uh, I can't do this because I cannot pull cord and pull cord and pull cord and pull cord all to have to put a saw away and do the whole process again tomorrow and to sometimes have it work out and sometimes have it not work out. Uh, it causes me too much pain and I can't get my work done. I really can't. I can't get my chairs done. I can't get my work done because I'm in so much physical pain. Uh, that's why I appreciate the support from all you neighbors, all you subscriber neighbors, uh, all you other YouTubers. Uh, there's a couple of you. Greasy Shop Rag, thank you very much, neighbor. I really do. I really appreciate that. Uh, that means the world to me. Uh, listen, don't idolize people. We're just people on a screen. Don't idolize us. Uh, don't idolize football players and movie stars and everything, man. We're just people. It's cool. I think it's neato that he not only responds to my comments on his channel, but then he comes over and subscribes to my channel, my crazy ass, who doesn't know what the hell he's doing, and uh, gives me advice. And I'm like, well, shit, this is awesome. You mean this guy's willing to tell me, or, or willing to give me advice instead of tell me, dude, you're an idiot. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Instead, he just nicely says, get it out of your mind that this is your problem, and look at this. You're smart enough to figure this shit out. That's what he told me. <laughs> That's what he told me. You can obviously figure it out. I ain't no expert, but uh, that was very, very, very encouraging to me. And so, while I don't idolize him, I did find it kind of cool. It's neat. I don't make a huge deal out of it, but it's neat, neighbors. Okay, so that being said, let's turn down and find out what the hell is going on with Nathan Bolton's mini tiller. Uh, and yes, I said his last name, but Nathan Bolton doesn't care about his last name being shared on my channel. He's one of them guys. doesn't matter. Okay, so... All I have done is lost my wing nut. That's all I've done so far. I took it off and I was like, well, shit, I should be recording. Number one, to help me learn. Uh, number two, to hopefully help you learn and, and, and get entertained. And then number three, sadly, to cover my ass. Because a neighbor Bo saying I did him dirty. Oh, yeah, looks like we had some rancid gas. Okay, so um, there was no gas in this thing. And it smells like the last gas that was in it. It smells a little rough. Uh, the fuel lines are immensely stiff. 100% need replaced. <laughs> um, yeah, 100%. They are. Yep, it just broke. All I did was touch it. So that's that's um, for me. It's like okay, I really would like before I go through all that work to be able to see my piston. Um, I have a blower right now, a PB5255 up here that I rebuilt. And the IPL on the carburetor says that one of these things is an adjustment screw, but it's kind of rusted and corroded. And I think the coil needs replaced probably, even though it has spark. I think it's not a good coil. Either that or the carburetor itself is bad because I've, I've rebuilt it twice and went through an ultrasonic bath and everything. Uh, and that saw, that, that damn blower, all it will do is once in a blue moon, try and, try and spark once in a blue moon. Um, but it, it's getting plenty of fuel and almost like it's flooding out But I think the reason it's almost like it's flooding out is because it doesn't have a strong enough spark um, I pressure tested my carburetor everything was good, but that neighbor doesn't want to spend any more money uh, He doesn't speak English and so right now that sets until I figure out Does he want to pay his bill and take his stuff back or does he want to surrender it? And let me tinker with it and hopefully fix it and sell it Okay, so uh, that being said, I was looking at this, the mufflers over here, uh, the recoils up here. I think this whole little plastic housing does have to come off. And when I look at it, uh, I'm looking, I see a screw down here that we've got to take out. So without killing our fatty bunting's dog that's over here, we do have to find our, win our, our wing nut still. I don't know where that has gone. Um... And I should have been set up with a screwdriver already here, but I was not. Did you dirty neighbors? Sometimes turning on the camera is last minute because I'm like, well, shit, I should record this. Number one, again, to cover my ass. But number two, because I can learn. Okay, yeah, I like this screw. I'm going to have to get a 90 degree hookup. This is what I hate, neighbors, is having to get up and down off the floor like this. Ah, that is the thought from earlier. Greasy shop, Do You happen to be there, neighbor. If so, we talked about your workbench, and you did a video on how you designed it and stuff. That's the kind of chit. I'm not smart enough to sit down and figure out and plan properly. I used to be, and maybe I still am, but right now, I'm struggling with uh, 
trying to get shit like that together. I hate Phillips head neighbors. I really do. Okay. And then, let's see. That will have to be unplugged. Uh, there's another screw back under here. I got so much footage I need to get to you guys. But sometimes it's really hard. Because I don't always like exposing all my mistakes. Man, they don't make these easy to get to. And I hate Phillips hits. Okay. Uh, let's try again. I cannot afford the $500 Milwaukee 90 degree. I thought about buying a cheap skill one, but I'm like, nope. That's one of them tools I can do without. And uh, I don't want it bad enough to get a cheap one. I know I would most likely like it. So I don't need to buy the cheap one to try it. Okay, I see that one. And then as I look, I am thinking... It's actually clipped under this recoil, and so it will make my life much easier, probably, if I go ahead and remove this recoil. And as I'm looking, my screws are not the same size, so I'll keep them separate. Okay, and then we have our throttle cable, which is hooked to it, but I just need it out of the way to, to easily get that. I don't want to break that stuff. Okay, as I'm looking, I'm thinking, it needs to unclip there and then it should should theoretically come out okay move our wire out of the way it does okay there's that okay with its screws we want to stay organized and now we can go ahead and get our muffler off which looks like uh, a number four hex head let's find out um those came out nice and easy and shall we get a look at our piston neighbors okay I shall get a lot. I can already see the part I see looks okay. I see one little mark, but I don't know that we have anything concerning thus far. Here you go, neighbors. Uh, does that look good? Okay, can you see? Shoot. You cannot. I will zoom you in. Give me a good look here. Okay. Here's our piston. Okay. Uh, let's turn this a little bit. Look at the rest of it. Me thinks his piston on the exhaust side uh, seems to be okay. I'll have to check if those are nail catchers or not. Um, they just don't look anything major. So let's check them. Let's get a pick. And we're going to check if those lines catch nail or not. I don't think they will. But we'll check. Don't want to waste our neighbor's money. Definitely don't catch nail. Not at all. Okay, so, that being said, the next thing we want to do, neighbors, uh, is uh, think about a new bench. <laughs> I mean, a new shop. And think about if we want to continue in this business because I'm in so much pain. Okay, so, the next thing we want to do, we want to go ahead and we'll remove our carburetor, which looks like we can either use uh, Phillips or Flathead. Okay? And we're going to have to... I think I want to just pull the whole gas tank and wash it out if it's not too hard whilst I'm in here. Because um, I'm not the guy that can sit here and dump this tiller upside down to flush the gas tank. Okay, there's that. She's a little dirty, yeah. Okay. Uh, these fuel lines are really hard. <laughs> okay, we're going to disconnect our throttle cable here. Just take that out of the way. All right, and then this is just gonna come right off of these fuel lines. Okay, they are bad. There's our carburetor. Okay, that being said, that's done. Uh, we'll get that out of our way, just like that. And it does look like we only have to take off uh, three screws to remove our neighbor's gas tank. And it's full of brit grit and debris. So we will take off our three screws. Okay, because we can't leave the gas tank filthy. 
this is what happens though when you want to go the extra mile you will run into issues every time it never fails i promise you when you try to help your neighbor extra it's going to be hard there's that and then there's one more down here neighbors that i saw okay all right there's that simple enough there's our tank vent standard uh duckbill uh tank vent ndk echo Chinese Echo Zamo Company, I think, makes those. Uh, his tank vent line is not too bad. I think he'll be okay there. As long as it works, we'll test it. Uh, they usually don't go bad. It's just a duck bill. Sometimes they get stuck, but that's about it. Okay, now, let's get this garbage out. Look how stiff this thing is, neighbors. Look at that. That's it. Garbage, okay? And then uh, his grommet. Oh, boy, I hope I have. I think I have some of the three three hold grommets these damn things are not cheap if i don't have them in stock because then i gotta buy an individual one or my neighbor has to wait until i order more parts from munching and neighbors okay there's that yeah i think the grommet's probably gonna be okay oh it's stiff but we'll have to see we'll have to see okay so we're gonna clean that out in an ultrasonic bath okay and then we will tear down this carburetor it will get an ultrasonic bath most likely and then we'll find the kit for it if we have it or the parts for it if we have it rebuild it we'll put all that chip back together and then we'll see if the chip should run it should as long as the coil is good i didn't check if it's spark oh should we see what his spark plug looks like uh, i like watching greasy shop rag he's educational okay this is this is a guy that he works at a shop and so he's just diagnosing a lot of common problems all day long and uh he's a he's a freaking di diagnosing machine he really is and uh i have learned a lot watching him so go check out his channel please and support him um i really appreciate him uh, i have a lot of videos where i mention him that aren't quite uh made it to the internet yet but um uh, i got some videos with my bullshit button because i like his bullshit button and i found my bullshit button and pulled it out uh his spark plug doesn't look bad i mean i'm looking at sorry guys i'm just like tinkering with this and looking at it and i'm looking at the color and I'm looking at everything, and when I look at it, I think, I haven't seen this run recently, and I don't know when it was run, but based on this spark plug, it looks like this machine was run in a pretty decent condition. Um, we do not have, or I'm sorry, <laughs> said that backwards, we do have uh, adjustments on this carburetor. Some of the blowers and stuff, there's zero adjustment on your carburetor. It is what it is, and you can't adjust it. Whoops. Um, and sometimes they don't even have an idle screw like especially the little cheap hyper tough uh not hyper tough damn it there's another cheap weed eater out there they don't um have any adjustments on their carburetors at all and no idle screw so that being said neighbors the last thing i want to do is we do have a gasket here it looks okay uh no maybe not i hate pulling them off but yeah that's i don't want to leave that on there it's so brittle it will probably never seal it's just breaking okay so we'll have to replace that too, but I do have those. I just hate it. Uh, my neighbor's bills rack up real quick with tiny little 3 and $4 chip like that when I can't reuse it. So, that being said, let's make sure, even though I'm fairly certain it's going to be fine. Oh, yes, neighbors, our exhaust sign, or I'm sorry, our intake sign looks fine as well. Uh, let's look through our spark plug port. I'll have to tip her sideways again. Sorry, fatty bumpings. Uh, there is an immense, immense amount of carbon on his cylinder wall itself. My goodness. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, we're, we'll try and work some of that off with some chemicals whilst we're doing our stuff we'll let that soak with a little bit of uh we'll try car parts cleaner and then i've got um a couple of other different things i use i don't want to disclose what they are uh can share all my secrets not just yet neighbors i gotta i gotta keep some of my secrets because i don't have many that help me keep in the game yeah it's just a black film a large thick black film of deposit along the cylinder wall and that could uh, eat up our pistons so we want to make sure we get that off 
before we restart our equipment. So that's what we will do. Okay. Uh, that's going to be it this time. That's going to be it this time of Shed Shop Working on the Floor Edition. Um, diagnosing this Mantis. It is a Mantis. Uh, that's all it says. It's the only identifiers. Let's see. It's a 21.2 cc. That's a strong little tiller. You better watch out, neighbors. This thing will rip your house down. That's about all we have. Uh, Kioritz Corp. I think they used to work with Echoes. The old Echoes were Kioritz before they were Echo completely. That's it, neighbors. That's all we have. That's the only info I have on this. It's a Mantis 21.2 mini tiller. Or 21.2 cc. Whoa, chit, neighbors. I am so sorry. Please don't get mad. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to hit you. I'm not abusive. I swear. Unless you call me abusive consistently, years on end, then I might become abusive. Because when we tell somebody they are something for years and years and years and years and years, sometimes they become it. That's why I tell you, be kind of one another. Everyone's facing a battle. I love all 8 billion of you, damn it. Even though I suck at it, let's keep persevering together, neighbors.